more of their kind. We must go. Hide this where it won't be found. My journey ends here. No. You must complete the task that we began. The survival of our order depends on it. Typhoid. Oh, quite as unpleasant as the dysentery we suffered in Ethiopia. It had us running through half the loos in Africa. Good choice of verb. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do you remember that parasite I had in my foot in India? Yes, I most certainly do. Uh, bastard wormed his way into your you. foot, much as I have tried to worm my way into your heart. <laughs> I just kept thinking, I can't lose my foot. What will I do with all my shoes? Exactly. That was a brilliant footwear for a dig. Mm. You think? Brilliant. Thank you, especially if you dig with the heel. <laughs> yes. Hi. <laughs> how are you? I'm good, how are you? Yeah, I'm yes. fine. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Cheers, mate. Right, this is how you stay single, is it? <laughs> we are extremely excited and, in fact, relieved to finally have this exhibition come to New York. As you can understand, it's taken hundreds of people, and uh, we're very thrilled about the reaction it's been getting. Do you miss it? What? Sex? That too. But I was referring to the digs, silly. You used to be archaeology's rising star, and now you... Well... What do you think? I think, Miss Chicken, that it is in your blood. And besides, do you think dear old Dad left anything for the rest of us to find? Not a thing. Cross of Constantine. Unearthed by Oliver Chaikin to the Vatican's eternal gratitude. They said it would never be found. Hmm. To dad. To dad. Nobody told us about this stunt. You got a permit? <laughs> Some kind of 12th century multi-gear decoder. What do you think it's supposed to decode?
you okay? That was a bit dramatic, I suppose. <laughs> Oh boy. Where is it? Damn bastard. Free! Hey! No, no, you misunderstand. I'm recovering this for the museum. I'm not stealing this. I'm re that guy was stealing it. I don't think the coroner is going to have too much trouble figuring out cause of death. Where's the head? Ambulance. All right, how about we keep the body and the head together, huh? For old time's sake. You're sentimental, you know that? Yeah. Yeah. What? <laughs> You're kidding me. You got to be close. Very close. Kidding me. Ow! You should be thanking me. I recovered that for you. I risked my life to save that, and you're treating me like a criminal. This is ridiculous. There is no need to push or to be rude. Is yes, her? And you are? Agent Daly, FBI. You're a little late, aren't you? I apologize. It's not every day of the night the round table show up and behead someone in Bintown, Manhattan. And where was the security? Where were you? I mean, do you really think that I wanted to go and retrieve the cross of Constantine when it took me three hours to get dressed? Are you telling me you had nothing to do with this heist? <sighs> Test taken. Mother of one, solid citizen, head of archaeology at the Mnookin Institute. Uh -huh. I don't steal artifacts from museums. I dig them up out of the ground. Mrs. Indiana Jones? <laughs> That's it. I'm the sequel to the prequel. Now, if you would please um, remove these, they really don't go with what remains of my dress. Let me get this straight. You steal a police horse, ride off into the park after bad guys who just beheaded a cop. You chase them down, you corner one and nearly impale him with a stick. Is that right? Yes, and it's not a stick. It's a crozier. It's a ceremonial staff used by popes. I stand corrected. Are you insane? No. That cross belonged to the Emperor Constantine, who, it is said, held it in his hands the night he converted to Christianity, whereupon he ascended into heaven and the angels sounded their trumpets. What people will believe to get them through the day. However, that cross is a major find of my father's, my late father's. I was there when he dug it up out of the ground. I sure as hell wasn't going to let some thug get away with it. Well, that explains everything. It, it actually does explain everything. Uncover. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, 
Oh, oh, oh, oh. Be very careful of that, please. It is over 1,700 years old. The central stone is a little wonky. Just take it. I mean it. By the way, if you're not going to thank me for making you guys look good and catching the bad guy and all that, the least you could do is replace my Manolos. I'm sorry? You what? My Manolo Blahniks. Manolo who? If you got to ask, you can't afford them. Made you look in disbelief. All right, she's an overconfident, reckless, irritating type A type. I think she knows better than everybody. Crazy. Yeah, she is hot. Mom. Hi, sweetheart. We just saw it on TV. Yeah. The cops were chasing him through the park. One of them dumped the mayor's wife in the bushes. I know, but she's gonna be fine. And I didn't let them get your grandfather's cross. Now, I think it's time for all good cowgirls to go to bed. Good night, Jerry. With all the excitement, bed? Mom, what happened to your shoes? It was that kind of party. I've just spoken to Cardinal Brignoni. Had to explain. Unbelievable. I've just compiled a list of what was stolen and damaged. I'll send it to him. Priceless treasures? A police officer dead? I'll extend the Pope's sympathies to the family of the deceased policeman and tell him a mass will be said in his memory in St. Peter's. Yes, good. What's this decoder? I have no idea. Good work, as always, Michael. New York's finest is beheaded. The mayor's wife is thrown onto the back of a horse and taken away. Vatican treasures looted by medieval knights in Manhattan. Ma'am, we did get one of them. Correction. Tess Chaikin got him. His name's Gus Waldron. We think he's the killer. We're running DNA tests on his sword right now. Did you talk to him? We will, as soon as he's conscious. Get him to talk. If he doesn't, why don't you get Tess Chaikin to work him over? You want to hear my brilliant theory on this? Mm. Islamic fundamentalists. <laughs> Wearing crusader outfits with big red crosses. That's why it's so brilliant. Like, who would think? Well, they've got helmets on, so no tattoos or marks we can use to ID them. No the horses? Hard to make out if they're branded. Stop. Go back. Right there. <laughs> Test chicken. Oh, she can dig for my priceless artifacts any day. Hello. What? Test chicken. She can dig. No, I got it. Who is it? Manolo Blahnik. You know, funny, it's kind of hard to imagine you deciding between peep toes and strappy heels. Well, I, uh, I hope they fit. Well, there's only one way to find out. Thank you. I'm touched. The Bureau extended its thanks for your heroic antics, sorry, actions of last night, uh, but it's adds gorgeous. that it discourages civilians from taking matters into their own hands. Uh, I'm glad you like them. They're great. Uh -huh. Speaking of last night, you were, uh, you were pretty close to some of those nights. Is there anything you remember? One of the knights who took the decoder, speaking in Latin, he said, Veritas vos liberavit. Uh, the truth shall set you free. Huh. I also remember whacking him with the crozier. He's not the same night that I toppled off the horse, however. Ah. So, you don't like coffee. Now you're going to tell me you don't eat donuts. No, that's cops. 
We're into muffins. But not coffee. No, I love coffee. Just not now. It's it's Lent. So. so you gave up coffee for 40 days? Yep. Wow. Anything else? Swearing. Chocolate. Carbon emissions. All the big sins. And a few other things that I'll keep to myself. Wow. I didn't know anybody did that anymore. Well, with a name like Sean Daly, it's practically genetic. Plus eight years at Our Lady of Perpetual Sorrow, Boston College with the Jesuits. You get the idea. I take it you're not particularly religious. Not particularly. You're going to hell. <laughs> Why do you think they were dressed as Templars? Last costume at the rental shop? It looks like you could use a new pair of these too, huh? Oh, those are my good luck boots. Those have taken me to digs around the world. Turkey, Syria, Afghanistan. I bet you'd sure like to put those back on, huh? But raising a daughter is a full-time job, I understand. <laughs> yeah, my dad was away a lot when I was a kid, so I don't want to do that to her. She's the light of my life. Well, um, <clears throat> if, you, uh, if you remember anything else, call that number. You'll get me right away. Thank you, mm -hmm. Special Agent Sean Bailey. You have a good day. In 1118, the Knights Templar went to Jerusalem to protect the pilgrims who were going to the Holy Land after it was recaptured by the Crusaders. Over the next 200 years, they became powerful and rich. How did they get rich? Some people say that they discovered King Solomon's treasure. What happened to it? Well, the church came after them, accused them of heresy, and got rid of them, probably because they got too powerful. But the legend goes that some of the Templars sailed away on 18 galleys with that treasure never to be seen again. So it's still out there? That treasure could be the greatest find of all time. And you could be the one to find it. You think there's a map? If there was a map, it would probably be in code because the Templars were masters of encryption. Yes. Encryption. And of course, you would need a decoder to find the treasure. What if that decoder was Templar? The one they stole. Yes, right. stand up. I need you to focus, all right? That was not a robbery last night. Oh, no. Those men were after nothing <clears throat> less than the treasure of the Knights Templar. Stop. You're going to make me laugh. No. Remember that decoder we were looking at? Oh. Just as they came riding in on those horses? No. All I remember is you desperately trying to save my life. Thank you very much. Well, one of the knights went straight up to that decoder and took it and nothing else. Oh, that is strange. Okay. They made the whole thing look like a robbery in order to mask the real purpose. Which was? They stole the decoder to decode the map to the treasure of the Templars. You're having a recurrence of malaria. I need a Templar expert. Oh, you're serious. Mm. Yes. Bill Vance. Bill? You know? Of course. He was my dad's favorite colleague. I, I spent just about every summer with him on digs as a kid, but his specialty's Phoenicians. Only well, doesn't exactly advertise his recent love of Templar. It's a chance of academic suicide. Roswell, UFOs, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Did you talk to the police about this? Just another crackpot theory, right? Yeah, right. Oh, um, Tess? Tess? Grandma, Agent... Aparo. Right. I was just checking on Gus Walker, and you made quite an impression on him last night. Concussion, multiple fractures, internal injuries. 
Just a night out for you. They don't jazz like they used to. <laughs> so, did he say anything? Do you know who's behind all this? Not yet. I'm waiting for Agent Daly to question him. Excuse me. Yeah. You know, I thought you'd given up all that Joan of Arc business, no? You are a respected academic now. You've got a daughter, you know. And Tess. All right, now, just be very still and quiet, and I'll be right back. Don't say a thing. Um, he's ready for the ice bath. Tess. No, 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 ice bath. Tess. Hello, Gus. You. Yep, it's me. Temper, temper. What are you, FBI? The decoder, Gus. What did you do with it? What decoder? I don't want to think about that. All right. And I want your associates. Names, Gus. I don't have a lot of time. What do I get out of it? You get a deal. Vatican gets its treasures back, shows you its mercy. Okay, fine. Good choice, Gus. Agent Daly. Please, uh, call me Sean. Now that I know your right foot is bigger than your left. What do you want? <laughs> yeah. Look, I already told your partner everything I know. Hey, I gave her a name, all right? The only one I know. So you just... Shh. Look, you just make sure that the deal is... Oh. What are you doing here, Miss Chicken? Oh, Tess. Now that I know you're a graduate of Our Lady of Perpetual Sorrow. Yes. You're visiting someone? Yes, my friend Clive. He was injured at the museum last night. Of course. Here to pick him up, take him home. I want their names. All of them. See you. You as well. <laughs> Have a nice day. I'll see you. Petrovich. The others. I want the others. Feeling cool and refreshed? Yes, thank you. For abandoning me to the tender care of Igor the Ice Bath Nurse. First name basis, always good. Yep. Listen, don't tell anyone what I told you about the Templars. Tess, what are you up to? The truth shall set you free. They figure a heart attack. Massive. Couldn't revive them. A heart attack? I thought you said all they had was broken bones. We're waiting for the autopsy, but... This it's suspicious. I'd say. Security tapes? Yeah, Emma, you roll the tapes, please. 
Everyone going into Waldron's room checks out, except for a female doctor we haven't been able to identify yet, and an FBI agent. Who? An FBI agent deceased two years ago. Oh. Great. Whoever he is, he's a pro. Take a look at this. Knows where the camera is. He's able to hide his face. He knows what he's doing. I'm supposed to explain this to the Vatican. Emma, could you, could you play the tape of the doctor for me? Yeah, thank you. Wait, stop it there. What? And, uh, and zoom in on her feet. Look at that. Size nine and a half. Left foot bigger than the right. The Vatican is, of course, very distressed at the loss of such precious artifacts. Yes, I certainly understand the scene of the Angelus. It's incredible that your only suspect succumbed to his injuries. Um, Agent Daly. Sean Daly heads our investigative team. Monsignor the Angelus. Father. Oh, please call me Michael. Oh, thank you, but uh, I'll stick to Father. If you don't mind, old habits are hard to break. Well, if you'll excuse me. You're Catholic. I am, yes. Practicing? Uh, forgive me. I shouldn't be so inquisitive. <laughs> You know, in many ways, our work is not dissimilar. How so? We both help people come to terms with their transgressions. No, don't let me keep you. Of course. I did a quick search this morning. Bill Vance is MIA. He's no longer at uh, Columbia University. His email account is shut down. No phone listing. Lots and lots of Google hits, but, um... I'm sorry, I can't find his whereabouts. Hmm. Sorry. Any luck yet? Not yet. Strange that Vance would have just disappeared. So unlike the old sod. It's actually not Bill that I'm looking for. Anyone I know? I doubt it. His name is Bronco Petrovich. Wait. The horses. Why didn't I think of that before? Coming. Hello. FBI, I need to speak to Tess Chaikin. Oh. Tess! Uh, she left about a half an hour ago. Shouldn't we be talking warrants and such? Abuse of process, illegal searches, uh, violation of public trust, that sort of thing. Not that I'm a lawyer, I'm just a friend. Bronco Petrovich? Bronco Petrovich? Bronco Petrovich. As you can see, Mr. Petrovich, your little friend here, he likes to dance. So, name! I don't know. Look, hey! I don't, ah, I don't know! Uh, can I help you? Yeah, I'm looking for Bronco Petrovich. Yeah, he's in the back. Ah! Okay, okay, well, okay, okay, okay. Mitch. Mitch Edison. He hired me. Mitch okay. Edison! Fourth one. Who's the fourth one? I only saw him that one time. Ah! Mitch, no! Ah! Mitch. Talk to Mitch. He knows. Very good, Mr. Petrovich. I do appreciate your cooperation. Well, another dead body, and what a coincidence. You, again. Look, the guy that must have done that to him knocked me over as I came in right there. And I tried to help him, but it was too late. He was dead. I had nothing to do with it. Nothing? 
Oh, so you just happened to be taking an afternoon stroll in the stables of a crooked ex-cop who just happened to be in charge of the mounted division and whose horses are really the only ones in the city capable of pulling off a heist like we had at the museum the other night. And this is just, it's just a grand coincidence, right? That isn't what I said. I don't believe you. Come here. Oh, no. Really? Really. Come on. No, thanks. I gave it up for Lent. Mm-hmm. Cards on the table, Miss Chaykin. It's Dr. Chaykin, if we're being so formal. What the hell are you up to? I thought you checked out. A respected academic, a mom. But you've been holding out on me. And what you know, I want to know. Right now. Or you will be charged as a suspect in the murders of Bronco Petrovich and Gus Waldron. Gus Waldron? What do you mean? He died soon after you left his hospital room, Dr. Chaykin. His heart just stopped. I have nothing to do with that. There were two unexplained visitors to his room. The first one was an FBI agent who, it turns out, died a few years ago. The second one was a female doctor who looked exactly like you now. I admit, I talked to Gus Waldron and he gave me Bronco Petrovich's name. So you thought you'd do my job? No. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to negotiate for the return of the decoder. I felt if I found him, I, I could do that. What? The 12th century decoder that was stolen. Yeah, no, I know, the I know the decoder. Yeah, I am assuming that the thief or thieves don't understand the immense value that it holds for archaeology. The Templars, the last two, tell me their names. I don't have them. He, he only gave me Petrovich. I'm looking for a killer, Dr. Chaykin. If you don't tell me, you don't get to go home. Why do you put your life at risk? For archaeology? It wouldn't be the first time. What's the real reason you're doing this? Okay. Cards on the table, right? Cards are on the table. It's about my dad. My father devoted his entire life to archaeology. He spent all of his time away from his home, away from me, searching and digging on every continent. He was haunted by the desire to uncover the truth with a capital T, that, that deep, eternal truth about people and, and their mystery. One day in Turkey, he was on a dig and he saw a fiery cross burning in the sky. And he thought, okay, I have sunstroke or fatigue or something. And then the next day it happened again. And that day he found the cross of Constantine. This is the same cross that I recovered the other night at the museum. Now, my dad always used to joke around and say, for that one day, he believed in God because God believed in him and led him to the cross. And I, I was never really sure if he was serious or not about that. And this explains, uh... It's what my dad would have wanted me to do. And in this way, he's... He's still alive for me, and I can share his quest. I can get a little piece of him back. The Knights Templar were guardians of the church. They were guardians of the holy truth that you believe in. Now, the decoder will unlock their writings, and if it's lost, their message that, that, that would mean so much to faithful people like yourself the world over. It will be gone forever. That is the power of archaeology. I uh, won't be seeing you again, will I? Well. Should there be, I don't know, a cave-in at the Holland Tunnel, or another dead Templar, or a combination of the two? I don't go chasing after trouble, Agent Daly. Of course not. You're Kim's mom. You don't need to remind me. Well, goodbye. Goodbye. Come in, please. Thank you. Sit down. You have news? Uh, nothing concrete yet, Father. But I was wondering, 
What's this 12th century decoder? It's of little value except for research purposes. Someone seems to think it's pretty valuable. An ancient artifact that's been gathering dust for hundreds of years in the Vatican archives. How it wound up among the collection of treasures is really the only mystery. Could there be some link to the Knights Templar? Because of the red crosses on the thieves' costumes. Is this something Dr. Chaikin suggested? I remember seeing her that night, chasing after the thieves with a crozier, wearing a cocktail dress. She did bring this to my attention, yes. And she thinks this robbery was the work of a religious order that ceased to exist over 700 years ago. He locked me up, he threatened me, and then he said he was gonna haul me off to jail and under the Patriot Act, he doesn't even have to charge me. Charming, caveman courtship. No. So, um, did you find your precious Dakota? Not even close. <sighs> Help. What's that Thanks. smell? Uh, Not eating chickpeas again. No, tonight's dinner is grape leaves, stuffed with wild rice and sweet Uncle onions. Clive, yes. I think you've made a full recovery. Oh. Right, so are you trying to hint that maybe I should go home? You little double crosser. Go, put this on the table. No dessert for you. Go, 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 go. Oh, by the way, I found some information on Vance for you. It's on your computer. Is that the Professor Vance you always talk about? Yeah. It's really sad. About the accident? Really sad. Car crash and boom. Wife and daughter gone from the planet. I was at the funeral. That was the last time I saw him. That was a year ago. The accident. A year ago tomorrow. So if Bill were going to surface somewhere, it would be... At the cemetery. Tomorrow. And? I don't know if I can believe a word that comes out of her mouth. Between the story she tells me about her father and this cross of Constantine, I just don't know. Back to the present and closer to home. Branko Petrovich's phone records list one Mitch Addison. They were together at Rikers, and they traded a bunch of calls before and after the theft of the museum. Always one step behind, one effing step behind. Hello, Bill. Yes. I'm so sorry for your loss. Well, they're in a better place. That's what they used to say, isn't it?
Thank you. <laughs> How have you been, Bill? Well, after they died, I... I think I lost my mind. For a time, I, I traveled aimlessly. <laughs> I found myself in the Languedoc in France. There was an ancient church, a legend. It, it got me going again. A legend? Yes, the legend was that the last Templar had hidden something there. Mapped to the Templar treasure? Now, the treasure is very real. It, it, it just may not be what people expect. Picture this, Tess. The fall of 1290. The power of the Templars is fading. The Catholic Church is having Templars arrested, tortured, and accused of heresy. William of Beaujau, the Grand Master of the Templars, calls upon two of his loyal knights, Martin and Aymar. He gives them a precious scroll to take with them. This sacred document of immeasurable importance to the fate of Christianity was to be taken back to the Holy Land and revealed to the world, but, but then, May 1291, Jerusalem is on fire. Thousands have died. Emar and Martin's mission was now compromised. <laughs> Templar knights prepare to die, overwhelmed by Muslim warriors. Then, William of Beaujau, the Grand Master of the Templars, orders his knights, Martin and Aymar, to flee, to abandon the final battle. They have to protect the sacred documents at all costs. I'm going back. I won't abandon my brother. You think I want to abandon them? These are our orders from the Grand Master. You slaughter them all. This document is crucial to our mission. Doctor, we have to go. Muslim warriors in greater numbers were swarming from all sides. The only way out was by sea. Emar had finally convinced Martin to follow him in his desperate escape, even though he wasn't sure if their ship had managed to reach the port. Falcon Temple was there, waiting for them. They would be the only survivors of the massacre. The ship was also carrying the so-called Templar treasure, riches taken from the Holy Land, which they'd managed to bring on board before the city was besieged by the Muslims. As the slaves rode in the galley below, they watched helplessly as the city burned in the distance. The Templars had managed to escape with their precious document. The Templar motto? What was it? Veritas vos liberabit. Truth shall set you free. It will set us all free. It was you in the museum. Sorry I bruised your cheek. You always had a good arm. <laughs> the decoder was all I wanted. It's, it's the only reason I became involved. With murderers? I deeply regret the death of the police, and that Gus Waldron is a nasty bit of work. Was. He's dead. So is Bronco Petrovich. Three are dead because of all of this. I have nothing to do with that. Is that why you came looking for me, Tess, to turn me in? I'm not a cop, Bill. I'm an archaeologist. I... I had heard you knew something about the Templars, that's all. Well, then come, come and see with your own eyes. I can let you in on one of the greatest archaeological finds of our time. I need someone to share it with. He's leaving with her.
Uh, may I test? Yes. It does inspire awe, doesn't it? I'll say. The key that unlocks the secret of the Templars. <laughs> does it work? I take the coded letters from the scroll and carefully put them into the decoder. I think I'd been to the Vatican Library all those times. I was just sitting in some storeroom, gathering dust. A little cleaning, a little oil. It works perfectly. Templars were extraordinary craftsmen. Bill, hmm? why steal it? Why couldn't you just ask the Vatican if you could borrow it? <laughs> I can imagine the conversation. And uh, <clears throat> why would you need a Templar decoder, Professor Vance? Uh, well, Your Holiness, I intend to decipher a Templar scroll that will blow your mind. Yeah, Daly. Yeah. I don't know. She was supposed to pick me up hours ago, take me to the doctor. She never showed up. I had to wobble there myself. She's not even answering her phone, you know. I'm a bit worried. Tess Chaikin's missing. She's probably shopping for shoes. You know where she was last? Yes, she was supposed to meet up with a certain um, Bill Vance, he's the Templar expert. All right, what, what kind of car is she driving? New York plates TTO 1551. It's a light khaki Jeep Compass. was called to an old man's deathbed to give him the last rites. The old man revealed that he was the last surviving Templar. His name was Martin of Carmaux. As he lay dying, he dictated the story of his journey with Amar. The young priest encrypted every word on a scroll using one of the Templar's secret codes. Then, at the remains of his ancestral castle near Albi, the precious scroll, I found it. Yes, Tess, this is it. A message from the last Templar. The instructions to the Templar treasure. Bill, this could be one of the greatest finds in history. You and me, like old times. Did you have someone follow us? No, Bill, I, I wouldn't... You'll be all right, Tess. I'll take care of it. Bill, what are you doing? I'll be back.
Check outside. I'll get some backup. Baby. Lost? It's okay. I think you're gonna hang out here and party with us for a while. Nobody's baby. these back there I thought you might like them they're nice thank you did you plant some kind of tracking device on me when I wasn't looking we uh, we found the crypt and the trap door on the assumption that you were underground somewhere I put agents at each exit I was actually on my way to one of them now but I guess I just got lucky yeah your friend Clive called he was worried he does that did you find him find whom professor Vance the Templar expert did you find him 
Look, I found him at the cemetery at his wife and daughter's grave. I had no idea it would end up here. Of course. We're standing in the middle of the street. I don't care. Shouldn't we move over there at least? Not until you answer my question. Oh, come Sorry, on. it's my daughter. Sorry. Hello, Kim? I have been calling your cell every 10 minutes. Yeah, Clive. Sorry, I was out of range. Oh, um, you will not believe it. You have a visitor, and, um, well, it's Bill Vance. Clive? Clive? Mom, you never told me you learned how to charm snakes in India. Kimmy, uh, can you put Professor Vance on the phone right away, please? And Taz, I, I look forward to seeing you. Um, I, I believe you have something of mine. Look, I, I didn't know what had happened to you, so I just took them for safekeeping. Yeah, it's funny how we both have something precious to both of us. I'm coming home right now. Bill, if you touch a hair on her head, I swear I will hunt you to the ends of the earth. Mm. Okay. Hey, what's going on here? Back in your cab. Hey, let's go! You hey. said no! Hey, 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 I'm FBI. You're FBI. Tess! I'm FBI. Oh, FBI! Taxi! 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 Tess! Get out of here. Mom! You're filthy. What happened? Were you out of dig, Tess? Did you, uh, uncover anything? You don't know how many outfits she's trashed lately. Honey, go upstairs and get Mommy a nice hot washcloth and some aspirin. Sure. I should get going myself. But you just got here. And you want to hear more cool stuff about Mom. Kimmy, now. I'm sure we'll be seeing each other again soon, now that I know where you live. <laughs> a pleasure talking with you, Clive. One can never say enough about the Phoenicians. Goodbye, Kim. Bye. You're as adorable as your mother. I'm glad we've become friends. You didn't really think I would hurt her, did you? I'm disappointed you think that of me. But I did the trick. You of all people. I was hoping you'd be a part of this, Tess. I really was. Shut up. Tess! Tess! I'm not decent. Uh, your FBI agent's here. Keep this up, I might think you're dating. <laughs> what the hell were you thinking? We could have taken him. We could have taken him and protected your daughter. We would have had him and this whole thing would be over by now. I knew that if I gave him the scroll and the decoder, he wouldn't hurt her. I wasn't going to take any chances, not with my daughter. <sighs> okay. Okay, this is how it's going to work. You will not question suspects. You will not investigate these murders. You will allow me for once to do my job and it will be a good day when I don't have to rescue you. Rescue me? When did that happen? I have a car sitting outside right now that will follow your every move until I tell it not to follow your every move. For my protection? No, for my protection. You don't get it, do you? I am not questioning suspects to find out who murdered who. I am on the trail of one of the greatest archeological finds of all time. I don't care if this is bigger than King Tut. You are done, Dr. Chaikin. And don't take this the wrong way, but I hope to never see you again. We really appreciate your coming down to talk to us, Dr. Chaikin. Uh, Monsignor DeAngelis specifically requested your presence. Oh, thank you. I'm, I'm happy to help in any way I can. Agent Daly, so nice to see you again. I'm sorry to hear you had to go through such a terrifying ordeal, Dr. Chaikin. Oh, thank you for your concern. What can you tell us about Professor Vance? Professor Vance is the leading Templar expert, and he wanted that decoder very badly. To decode what? Scrolls. Isn't that right, Dr. Che? A scroll, actually. Three men are murdered to pursue a myth. But they were real, right? The Templars? Certainly, but the stories that are associated with them. The Templars were the guardians of Jesus' bloodline. They found the Holy Grail, the body of Christ, the formula to turn ordinary metals into gold. Their devotion to the church has been forgotten. It's the myths that endure for conspiracy mongers and treasure hunters. Did you get to see what the scroll said? I saw Professor Vance decoding it. Uh, he had just started when we heard the gunshots, so I don't know what it said. 
You would need a decoder. And the scroll. I can get you one of the two. Hey, you have to take me with you. Your boss said so. I don't care. I have the scroll. What? A copy. I took a picture of it with my phone before I gave it back to him. Let's go. Everything that goes through customs gets screened. Even things on loan from the Vatican. So, it's in 3D? It's an advanced x-ray. Incredible. It uses carbon nanotubes to produce a 3D image. Pretty cool, huh? Take your time. We've got about 150 more to go. There it is. Okay, good. Get this to the NSA lab right away. Perfect replica. Now let's see if it works. Bingo. It doesn't leave here, and neither do you. Not until you tell me what that scroll says. Hello? Hey, sweetie. I'm sorry, I'm still at work. Good, because Uncle Clive said I could watch anything I want on TV. I did not. <laughs> you sure know how to press my buttons. Are you coming home soon? I promise I'll be home soon. Bring a pizza. Uncle Clive wants me to eat dried dates with camel milk. Yuck. No, no pizza. No. Give me the phone. Give me the phone. Wow. Give me. No. Give me the phone. Oh! Honey, are you all right? It's just Uncle Clive freaking out. Beached whale. Oh, sweetheart. You're grounded for 16 years. Love you. Love you. Hey. Hey, is that for me? Are you done? No. Wait, you think keeping me here all night is gonna help you solve your investigation? No, I think keeping you here all night is gonna help me catch a murderer. You know Bill Vance insisted that he had nothing to do with that. Come on, you believe that? I don't know what to believe anymore. What about the other guy in the church? I told you I heard shots. I don't know, maybe it was uh, Vance firing his own gun. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. Just make sense of that, okay? Do you wanna hear the first part? Really? Mm-hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. May 1291. I am sad to report that Jerusalem is now lost. We abandoned the city, its darkness fell. Our hearts were leaden as we watched it burn from the deck of our ship, the Falcon Temple. On the second night of our journey, we sailed into a storm, the likes of which none of us had ever encountered. The winds are taking us east! The storm is getting at us from two directions! We have to hide this! Somehow they won't find it! If they board the ship! At the time, only Imar knew what was in this important document that we had to protect at all costs. The storm was more than any ship could withstand. It was a miracle that Emar, Hugh, and myself had survived the shipwreck of the Falcon Temple. Where are we? In enemy land.
For days, we walked aimlessly through the desert, guided only by our faith. In a desolate valley in the shadow of a volcano, we finally reached a fortification called Fonsalas. The enemy had just been there. Death was all around us. Aymar had a dark premonition. He knew that I, Martin of Carmeau, would be the one to carry out our mission. God would have to watch over us a little while longer. Aymar is lying down, the leather pouch clutched in his hand. I notice a large blood stain on his side. I rush to him. Aymar shrugs off the injury and the pain. Although it is clearly bad, there are more pressing matters. We had to go. More were coming. They will be back with more of their kind. You must go. No. Hugh looks at me, indicating that we should go without him and soon. Hugh returns to the church entrance, sword drawn to keep watch. I kneel next to Aymar. He coughs, coughing up blood. He indicates the pouch. Hide this. He asks me to hide it where it will not be found, and then says, My journey ends, ends here. Did Martin and Hugh get away? My photograph of the scroll is not the best. As you can see, some of the letters on the edges are impossible to read. But. I think it is clear from the text that Martin of Carmeau hid something of great importance in that church. Vance must be hoping that whatever they buried is still there, and that's likely where he's headed. To Fonsalus. Fonsalus? Uh, that's the town indicated in the scroll. It's, uh, it's not on any map. I've had people at Langley working on it all night. Father, do you think you could ask your scholars in Rome? Yes, of course. But taking a step back here, we're talking about a man who dressed up as a medieval knight and was living in the dungeon of a burnt-out church who was headed for a town that no longer exists. By all means, follow every lead, but don't let the Templar myths distract you. Dr. Chagan, I think you and I disagree about the Templars. I like to keep an open mind. In any case, on behalf of the church, I wanted to thank you for your efforts. The theft of these precious artifacts has been very distressing at the highest level. Are you... A believer, if I may ask? My father believed in hard evidence. We took nothing on faith. Well, again, my thanks. You're welcome. We took nothing on faith? Where did you come from? Eavesdropper. Loud talker. 
Why didn't you tell him the story about your father and the cross of Constantine? He would have loved that. That was a very personal story from my childhood. <sighs> Serves me right for telling you about it. Are you always this cynical? Is it cynical to doubt and to question? I mean, after all, it's the basis of the scientific method. Well, I don't hear doubt. I hear dismissal. Look, if religion is as much of a fairy tale as you make it out to be, why does it matter so much to so many? Call me when you figure out on salad. Will do, Father Daly. Right. Mom, I think I need your help. Yes, baby? I'm supposed to be writing about my favorite tree, and I'm stuck. Okay, well, what, what tree do you have any memories of or feel specifically a kinship with? That actually got me thinking of a weeping willow. Remember we used to see that at the lake? I think that would be the good choice. Sure. So... Good. Salix... Babylonica... What? Salix Babylonica. Weeping willow. That's its taxonomic classification. Taxonomic. Yeah, that's it. Salix. Salus. Kim? What? You're brilliant. Thanks. OK, look. Salus is willow. Yeah. In Latin. Fon in Latin means well. Now, the town that the Templars came to with the well and the willow outside the church, Fon Salus. <laughs> that's the name. Well and willow. It's my guess that the Templars actually translated the name of the village into Latin because the area was under Ottoman rule. And if I remember correctly, the great Al Idrisi mentioned it in one of his journals. That's my darling. This, this is Al Idrisi's beautiful map. All right, come on, Al Idrisi. That means well and willow in Turkish. It's like you found it. Uh, quite. There it is. <laughs> it's in Turkey. I've actually been in that area very nearby. Mom, the treasure. You're going to find it. You're going to be famous. It could all be a wild goose chase. I bet you'd sure like to chase that goose, though, wouldn't you? Well, I hung up my boots. No, you didn't. They're no. on the shelf. It's very easy access. The furthest I'm going is that desk over there. <laughs> oh, um, is that my cell phone? One moment. those lectures you give me about following my dreams? Look, I have the greatest dream that anyone could ever have already come true. I have you. What about the treasure of the Templars? You're, you're saying you want me to go after the treasure? Yes! Because it's what you really, really want. You're just gonna stay home? I can't do to you what my father did to me. That was a whole year at a time. This is only two weeks, right? Mom, you're my role model. Don't let me down. <laughs> but I've never gone anywhere without you before. I mean, what will I do? I can't just leave you alone here. I'll be fine. I'll take care of Uncle Clive. <sighs> as long as we take out. <laughs> Just make sure to be back for my competition. Kim. I love you, Mom. I love you, too. <laughs> Thank you for coming so diligently. Well, as you know, Father, we're taking this matter very seriously. I have no doubt about that. However, days are going by. Impatience is growing amongst my hierarchy. 
Well, be assured of our total commitment to the resolution of this case. To be honest, it is not the commitment of your department. I might question it is its competence in this area. I was wondering, have you had any luck finding Fonsalis? I'm afraid not. Our scholars in Rome aren't faring any better. If your experts and ours haven't been able to find it, perhaps Professor Vance is also having some difficulty. What about Dr. Chaikin? Any word from her? No. What, you're not surprised? You know, the most enduring myth about the Templars is that they hid jewels and gold of incalculable wealth. What a find that would be. And is that something a young, ambitious archaeologist would want to share with the FBI? Still there? I thought I left with the boyfriend about an hour ago, but she's still in there. All right, don't let her leave. I'll be there in 10 minutes. So is the flight on time? Yes. Here's your flight information for your transfer from Istanbul to Bodrum. Thanks. You didn't call me. I didn't have anything to say? You didn't have anything to say to me? I don't owe you an account of my whereabouts. Look, I'm beginning to think that everything you say to me is a lie. How can I trust you when you're having me watched? I'm having you watched because I don't trust you. Of course you don't. I can't go anywhere without being followed. It's to keep you out of trouble. I'm not five years old. I don't need a babysitter. So thanks, but no thanks. And just leave me be, OK? No, no, not until you tell me the truth. Whoa. You think you can just do whatever you want? Yeah, I always have and I always will. Deal with it. All right, here's how I'll deal with it. What? What are you doing? I'm not gonna let you go after Bill Vance. I don't care about Bill Vance. I'm going on my own dig and you're not gonna stop me. Leave her alone. If she wants to go after Bill, let her go. Somebody, call the police. Great. <sighs> they actually thought I was running away to be with some man. Well, aren't you? Come on, Sean. You ought to know me better by now. I'm under no obligation to you, and as an archaeologist of some note, I should not advance an opinion that may be mere speculation, thereby being misleading. I also have a policy not to tell anything to people who can cuff me more than once. Come on. I might be really off base here, but I think you have to charge me with something if you're going to keep me here any longer. I apologize. Great. Good luck. Hope you find your man. I really do.
Extraordinary. It's as if it never happened. Excuse me, won't you? Yes. Delightful destination. You're in my seat, FBI. I hope they got a good movie. If I start to snore, just give me a little nudge, yeah? What are you... 